Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, Tay-Sachs genetic disorder and as usual I recommend you to stop video here, read the question, try to solve this problem and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is the problem, a couple comes to genetic counselor concerned about the chances of having a baby with Tay-Sachs disease. The husband has a sibling die of the disease which is inherited as autosomal recessive trait. What are the chances that he is a carrier? And in order to solve this problem, let me uh, show you a pedigree of this family. So uh, we have father, mother and this couple has two children. One is a male uh, the gender of uh, another child is not specified, so we use this sign. And we know that this child was affected and died. So what is the chances for this phenotypically normal sibling to be a carrier for this uh, recessive uh, genetic disorder, autosomal recessive? So. Uh, let uh, assign small a allele for this genetic disorder and in order for this person to be affected with this genetic disorder he must have two recessive alleles so his genotype going to be small a small a because two parents are phenotypically normal and they cannot be uh, homozygous recessive as the uh, child because this is very severe genetic disorder and children usually die before the age 5. So uh, neither of the parents can be homozygous for this genetic disorder. So um, they must be carriers. So they wouldn't be affected but would have one defective allele. So the genotype should be capital A, small a, capital A and small a. So they would be carriers and uh, one normal allele is enough to produce hexaenzyme that prevents buildup of GM2 uh, lipid that cause this genetic uh, neurological disorder. So first of all this lipid would build up in the nervous uh, cells and nervous system would be affected first. And um, so uh, now we know that parents are heterozygous and we can find the probability for this person also be carrier or heterozygous as his parents. In order to find such probability we need to build uh, a Punnett square so we know that uh, both of the parents are heterozygous so heterozygous genotype on top, heterozygous uh, genotype of the second parent would be here on the side. And when we build a Punnett square, we can uh, find genotypes, phenotypes, and their frequencies. So here we would have phenotypically and genotypically normal child. Here we would have a carrier, a carrier here, and a uh, affected child here. So as you see, probability for this family to have affected child would be um, one quarter or 25 percent and probability to have uh, phenotypically normal children would be three quarters. So the probability that uh, this person is a carrier would be uh, two chances out of three. Some people make mistake here they think that probability to be a carrier is two out of four. But because uh, this um, genotype here uh, means uh, that it is going to be phenotypically distinctive from this group, we can elim eliminate such probability. So we have uh, to find the probability to be a carrier among this group. So phenotypically normal group. And as you see, the probability would be 2 out of 3.
and this is going to be our answer to out of three is the probability for this person to be a carrier or to have genotype that is capital A small a. Next question. Uh, PCR analysis shows that both the husband and wife are carriers for Thai Sachs disease. They decide to have uh, IVF and blastomer testing. Describe what will happen. In the first step of procedure, female would be treated with hormones, so she would be able to produce as many egg cells as possible, and usually it is between 10 and 20 and male wouldn't get any hormone treatment because males can produce billions of sperms every day. So when uh, these egg cells would be fertilized and uh, allowed to multiply, uh, on the day 3 or 5 uh, one of the cells would be taken for genetic testing and only those uh, embryos that would be phenotypically normal for both alleles would be transferred to the female uterus and what is interesting is that highest occurrence of this genetic disorder can be found in group of Jews of uh, Eastern European descent. Every uh, person out of 25 is heterozygous for this genetic disorder and uh, nowadays uh, due to genetic testing and IVF artificial fertilization techniques uh, this uh, group of people, those ha having highest uh, probability to have progeny who would be uh, affected with this genetic disorder, has lowest uh, probability to have children who is going to be affected even lower than normal uh, population. For example, in United States, uh, normally one person out of 250 would be heterozygous for this trait or would have one allele that uh, wouldn't produce normal protein and those people that belong to this general group uh, has lowest uh, possibility to have uh, children that would be affected with this genetic disorder but because these people uh, normally don't do any genetic testing uh, this group would have a high occurrence of this genetic disorder. As I already said, this genetic disorder result in death uh, between age uh, 3 and 5 and there is no cure nowadays for this genetic disorder but uh, recently findings and experiments with mice show us promising results in those groups of mice that got so-called gene therapy and the life expectancy is much higher and quality of life is much uh, better than in those group that didn't got this uh, gene therapy. So I hope that uh, genetic testing and uh, gene therapy in nearest future might help to cure this genetic disease or prevent it. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any, and see you in the next video. Goodbye.